This is a little piece about equipment sharing, and um, uh, we'll just go through a slideshow here. So um, there's a lot of DOTs, clearly we all have specialty equipment that just sits idle a lot of times, you know. There are certain pieces that can't really be shared. I mean, snow blowers need to stay in the section where there's snow blowers, and when there's no snow, there's no sense in moving it. But there are other pieces of equipment that we do own that are underutilized that some crews don't know where they're at or they don't even know that they exist within the agency because as, as an agency in ODOT, we have 4,500 employees and we our communication is horrible. We don't communicate with ourselves very well at all. So this was the old way, how we track equipment. So each crew would have their equipment listed on the board and they'd write what type of work needed to be done on it. So the field technician would come in in the morning and they'd look at it and they'd know what needed PMs and that kind of stuff. But then the, cr and the crew next door or maybe within the district would know what kind of, how many motor graders they had, how many backhoes they had and that kind of stuff. But other crews within a certain geographic area wouldn't even know what the crew had. <clears throat> so we came up with the idea that we, we started to develop an internal online equipment reservation system. And um, so as we started to develop it, we found an off the shelf product and I'm not here to promote the product, um, but I'm here to promote equipment sharing. And so instead of going from the old whiteboard and not knowing what it was, now if a crew needs a backhoe, it's an online system. So you go in and there is a calendar and you can search by location, you can search by distance of your crew, or you can search by type of equipment. And it'll come up and it'll give you the things that's closest to you specifically. You open the calendar, it'll show you when it's reserved, when it's vacant, and the hosting crew, if they need it for a season, so it's a tractor mower, they can blank it out for six months and say, hey, that's ours, we're not, we're not loaning it out. But there's certain, our state is pretty diverse geographically, so we have a high desert under snow, you know, six months out of the year. And then we have a temperate rainforest up against the coast. And so the coast can mow all year round when the, the high desert area can't, they're under snow. So why not move tractor mowers from the east to the west during those seasons? So anyway, they can go on and they can search all this stuff, find the equipment they want and, uh, and reserve it. And once they reserve a time, it sends, um, a, the, the host can either choose to receive text messaging or email notification mm -hmm that that is coming when they'd like to pick it up and then they can respond back in kind and tell them yes it'll be available for you on such and such a day and the fuel card and the um, the uh, keys will be in a certain location so the results we started this and actually in 2014 but these are 2015 solid results state of oregon those are all the crews that are sharing all the maintenance crews that signed up and um, so the utilization of our specialty equipment is going up uh, we had two, 2,155 reservation days in the calendar year of 2015. And there's 225 pieces of specialty equipment that have been uploaded by the crews and 103 crews are sharing. And so these were the results in 2015 when we started. Clearly um, it's taken off. The crews are starting to identify this is where they want to go to, to get the, um, to share. And uh, so here's a few of the pieces of equipment that, that um, have uh, types of equipment, specialty equipment that was very underutilized and, and showing the difference in the utilization now. So excavators, um, clearly those are ones that were underutilized. And so we're getting, getting those hours up. And then uh, a lot of crews didn't even know we had this. It's, uh, you know, graders go down and they'll plow a windrow of the, uh, uh, aggregate on the shoulder up into the road and this thing goes down and picks up the windrow and it's a loader and then loads it into a truck and they can haul it off without having to load it with scoops. So anyway, a lot of folks are, are loaders. So a lot of folks didn't even know we had that thing and then once they found it on with a picture on a reservation system, it's just taken off. Everybody wants to use that thing. What's the difference between the red and the blue? Um, the red is the um, informal sharing. So this was before before we went live with the, uh, re the online reservation system and those pieces of equipment that now um, in the calendar year 2015, how much the utilization has gone up. And so that was the best utilization gain was the shoulder machine. 
And then we've got one crew that is a fairly large crew in Central Oregon, but they, they share the most. They put all of their equipment up. Others just only have a few pieces that they're willing to share. So how we started, we ran utilization reports, got a subcommittee of our um, maintenance managers together, and then shared with them how much money we were losing um, with the, the equipment just sitting up against the fence. And nobody wanted to share because if I loan it to Bob, he's going to break it, then I'm going to have to pay for it, and so I'm not loaning it to him. And uh, so we just planted the seed with leadership teams and just told them in the regions and districts that we've got all this equipment sitting out there and no one's using it. And if we just um, change the culture within the agency, um, we can get our utilization up and then break down this, the walls of, um, of uh, other folks are going to, if they use it, they break it or they never uh, bring it back when they say they're going to. When they do bring it back, it's dirty. I mean, there was all kinds of reasons. So we found that champion. The champion was Bend, Oregon, and that was the one crew that just started this whole thing. And then they started putting peer pressure on everybody else to, well, I'm sharing with you. Why aren't you sharing with me? And so we, we took it a step further. So we decided to change the culture. And kids don't like to share their toys, so we incentivized it. So if you share your toys, we're gonna, you're going to make money. So they can run their own <coughs> rental companies now. So we incentivize fleet asset sharing. We socialize the fleet repair costs. We're implementing a new chargeback system, and part of the chargeback system, the repair costs are included. So they can't use that excuse any longer, that when he breaks it, I have to pay for it. Now that's a fleet charge. We, uh, the monthly rates include overhead insurance, the operating costs insurance, and uh, the rates exclude the fuel costs. Um, we updated our financial accounting system to compensate for the equipment sharing and the utilization. Um, basically, I'll just get this all up here. So what happens is this is, a, this, this is a dump truck. They usually don't share dump trucks. All the crews have them, and they're, they're used year-round for all different things, you know, winter operations and then ditching and paving in the summertime. But so, for example, how we incentivize and change the financial system is you've got a dump truck that cost their fixed rate, whether they use it or not, is $1,750 a month. And the utilization standard is 48 hours. So as they move forward and they charge 48 hours to this thing, um, they break even at $1,750. If they loan that to a crew for another 48 hours, that, the other $1,750, the move the budget from the crew that borrowed that piece of equipment into their crew. So they're actually making money if they share. So every hour that they're sharing that with another crew, they're making uh, the hourly rate, which I was believe was like uh, $38 or something of that nature. I don't remember exactly what the hourly rate was. So does that, does that make sense? So they are incentivized. The more it gets used, the more budget from the other crew gets moved from their crew into their own. So uh, another thing we did as part of the rate is we include transport services. So I've got uh, four transport trucks, five transport trucks with operators, and that's their job is to move equipment around the state. Most of the time what they were doing before is they were moving new equipment that I was deploying and the old equipment as it was coming back in and or removing equipment into the repair shops for repairs. We included that in the rate at their request to also incentivize sharing. So, oops. So now, if they want to borrow a piece of equipment, part of the reservation system is they call us, schedule us, and we'll move a motor grader from Pendleton, Oregon to Basque Station, and it's in their rates. So now they can't complain that, well, I can't afford the transportation cost to move this piece of equipment while it sits idle. So um, with that, we're um, moving forward, we've had good success with uh, our equipment being utilized, and it continues to expand. So, um, any questions? So, the software itself that that's only for the reservation, the location, and the reservation, but everything else, as far as the financials, that's all internal. That you guys are doing that yourself, as far as the. Uh, that, that's correct. That, yeah, it's not a financial. All it is is just an re online reservation system for the equipment. And so none of the financial activity takes place there because it's a hosted service that we paid for. So on the financials, is, is there any web-based 
their intro and that type system to that, or how is that handled? It's all by the accounting people? It is handled by the accounting people. The crews do their time cards every day, and they assign the equipment to a specific job activity, and then they enter it into the computer, and it takes care of the financial activities. Okay, we'll just go across the room. I'll get back to you, Ken. Tim, you had a question? Yeah. Um, clearly, you're uh, better utilizing equipment, saving dollars. Also, I assume you're paying a fee for the the, the service, the viewing rent service. Uh -huh. um, have you been able to justify the savings or the, the expenditure for that in, the, in your savings? Yeah, so far we are the first DOT. This, this specific system was built to have sharing among municipalities. So that was the brainchild behind this. So if it, the county wants to share equipment and every time they would do a reservation, um, the developer of the software would get a percentage of the, that piece. And so that's how it was all developed. And then when I saw it, I just talked about, hey, I want to use it internally. And he had not thought about that. And so at this point in time, um, I'm getting a very good deal on the software. And we wrote something like this early on. And if you start talking about IT resources and the cost of software development, we're getting a hell of a deal. Yep. Oh, do you make uh, your garages rent their own equipment so it doesn't show up as being available? Um, the repair facilities themselves? Um, it's in, if I understand your question, it's included in the shop rates? No, um, there's a calendar, and if they don't rent their own equipment, it looks like it's available. Do you make them, do they reserve their own equipment? Oh no! Yeah, they just block it out. If they, if they, yeah, if, if it's a tractor mower and they go, hey, we mow from May to July, and then fire season kicks in, we can't. So they'll block it out during that time, so it's unavailable. And then another crew may go, hey, we're we're just the snow's just coming off, so we can use it from July to September. Yeah. Ken? Do you have equipment that isn't assigned to a permanent assignee? You have a pool of stuff that. Um, fleet services, myself, we do have uh, six loaner blowers, three motor graders, and three extra 10-yard plow trucks with wings on them. And those are for specific emergency type situations. So if they have, we're in an emergency event and they have something that goes down, uh, we'll deploy those. So, so if those are under your lives, you the, the expert also will not Yes. And that's cost of business. My boss says that's the minimum you will keep. And I'm okay, I will keep that equipment. Yeah. Anybody else? All right, thank you.